Hello and happy Monday. Welcome to the 2023 NCAA Division III Women's Lacrosse Selection Show. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. What an honor and privilege it has been to prepare for this show and to have this bracket in my hands, a 46-team bracket. We're about to show you to set up the road to Salem, Virginia. Now, once again, 46 schools will compete. 32 conferences have been awarded automatic qualification for the championship. One team selected from Pool B with 13 additional at-large spots available. First and second round action gets underway this weekend. Winners advancing to regional play. The semis and finals are May 26th and 28th at Kerr Stadium. Middlebury, your defending champion and a team to keep an eye on once again. Let us begin this bracket unveil with the aforementioned champions. Yes, a school with an undefeated record entering the 2023 tournament. It is Middlebury, one of 18 schools that will receive a bye into the second round. A 19-13 victory over Tufts clinched their conference leading 11th title and third in the last four seasons. This was actually a rematch of the 2022 National Championship. 19 goals in that championship game helped Middlebury set a NESCAC tournament record with 55 goals. The school has eight national titles on its resume, 21 top three finishes in program history. Middlebury in for the 27th time in program history. A first round game at Middlebury features SUNY Geneseo, the Knights first ever State University of New York Athletic Conference Championship. Comes after an 11-9 victory over Cortland. They're in the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive season. And they'll face SUNY Canton for the right to take on Middlebury in round two, the third North Atlantic Conference Championship in school history. And how about the performance from Samantha Dater? Nine goals and four assists in the AQ clinching victory over the weekend for SUNY Canton. MIT is in in a host institution with the bye. 16 and three is their record. Despite a loss to Babson in the NUMAC championship, there is no doubt about their inclusion in the field. Number one in the most recent region two rankings, senior Lindsey Gambino, 62 goals and 48 assists while Ellie Rabinold has 82 goals. That ranks in the top 10 in the country. This is MIT's second NCAA appearance. The other came back in 2015. Trinity, Connecticut takes another at-large selection. Despite a loss in the NESCAC quarterfinals, Trinity earns the at-large spot after reaching number 13 in the national rankings and posting its best regular season record since 2017. First year attacker Molly Magukin made a major impact on the program, scoring 51 goals. It is the 15th NCAA appearance. First for the school since 2018. The Bantams won it all back in 2012. Happy selection show Monday to Plymouth State. Their record is 12 and six. Automatic qualifier representing the Little East Conference. Sophomore Ellie Mosher scored a career high five goals and was named the most valuable player of the LEC tournament. Moving on, Colby is a host institution and for the 12th time in program history, 12 and five is their record. At large selection after falling to mighty Middlebury in the NESCAC semifinals. The Mules were 12th in the most recent national rankings. Babson is in a ninth NUMAC championship for Babson, puts the Beavers in the NCAA championships for the ninth time in program history. They beat MIT 13 to 10. Claudia Dodge, Aaron Jane, and Jessica Evans all scored twice during a nine to one spurt that propelled second seeded Babson to that 13 to 10 win. Westfield State takes on Babson, your 2023 MASCAC champs. Cassidy Harvey scored six goals in a 21-15 victory for the conference's top seed, fifth NCAA appearance for Westfield State. In after a 12th consecutive NJAC championship is TCNJ. Five goals for the Lions in that title game for Allie Tobler, four for Anna Wright. The College of New Jersey, the most decorated program in Division III women's lacrosse, having won 12 titles. This is their 37th NCAA appearance. Now, the host action this weekend, awaiting the winner of a game that features 15 and 3, Messiah, and is an at large selection. 11th NCAA appearance, Rachel DeLate leads the team in scoring with 55 goals, also has 40 assists. 
Should be a quality first round match when they take on St. Mary's, Maryland, a no doubter victory in the United East Championship as the Seahawks defeated Morrisville State 23 to six. And how about the performance by Haley Betch, the tournament most valuable player after tallying a game high eight points with everything on the line. Moving on, a 17-1 record earns Kenyon a spot in the field and a first-round buy, an at-large selection after losing for the first time all season in the North Coast Athletic Conference Tournament. 56 goals for attacker Carolyn O'Neill this season, 17 wins for the Owls, the most in program history. Kenyon is in for the fourth time. Their North Coast Athletic Conference rival, DePaul, is in as well. The Tigers take one of those highly sought-after at-large bids after falling in the NCAC semifinals. Their last two games have been losses to Kenyon, but they would love another shot at the Owls. DePaul has a solid one-two punch offensively as Abby Keene and Emily Napier each have 46 goals this season. Let's hear it now for Lake Forest in the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. An automatic qualifier after taking the Midwest Women's Lacrosse Conference Tournament title thanks to a 16-6 victory over St. Benedict. The Foresters are led by Ali Graham, the MWLC Midfielder of the Year. Just two teams will participate in our next first and second second round match. It's a host institution. That will be played at 19-1 Pomona Pitzer, the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Automatic Qualifier. The Sagans prevailed in a thrilling 13-12 win against Claremont Mud Scripts on Saturday. Carly Sullivan brought home MVP honors, outstanding defense, while the offense was led by five goals from Fiona Lewis. Fifth time for Pomona Pitzer in the field and cannot wait to see the Sagans match up with George Fox making its fourth consecutive appearance. The champs in their first ever Northwest Conference Tournament bring an impressive 17-1 record. And listen to the quote from Katie Brand. Our team is honored to be the first ever NWC Tournament champions. I am so grateful to our administration staff and the conference for putting on a great tournament. Postseason, always an exciting time and we cannot wait to see who we have next. George Fox, you have Pomona Pitzer. Moving on, we're featuring 15 and four Franklin and Marshall. A thrilling 15-14 victory over Gettysburg sends the diplomats into the championships with all kinds of momentum. 11th season for Mike Fascia as head coach. They've seen their name in this bracket. Each of his 11 seasons in charge. It's the 24th NCAA appearance for Franklin and Marshall. Another 15 win team is Roanoke. Despite a loss to Washington and Lee in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference title game, Roanoke earns an at-large selection. Libby Bowman, 53 goals this season for the Maroons, 28 assists for Lily Blair, 11th time for Roanoke in the field. And to advance, they must beat Bryn Athen. Back-to-back CSAC titles for the Lions, second NCAA appearance in program history. The University of Chicago will host action this weekend. Their record is 16 and two, winning the second consecutive undefeated regular season conference title, currently in the midst of an 11 game win streak. The team had nine all conference selections. Lulu Hardy, offensive player of the year. Rachel Keith, defensive player of the year. And how about Kate Robinson, the coach of the year. Denison is in, thanks in part to the outstanding performance from Carolyn O'Day. She was excellent in goal, securing 13 saves with a 619 save percentage. Denison defeated Kenyon to win the NCAC tournament title. It's an automatic qualification into the field. A 24th NCAA appearance for Denison as you saw some highlights on your screen. Denison meets Hope in a first round game this weekend, ranked seventh in the most recent region seven rankings. Hope here after winning the first MIAA tournament championship in school history. They had been to the MIAA tournament finals three times in the last six years, fell short of the championship each time. Well now, Hope can make plans for a first ever NCAA appearance. It's worth noting, those games at UChicago will be played Friday and Saturday. So that has completed the first half of the bracket. We'll look to the right of the page and tell you about the other 23 teams in the field when we return after a brief break on NCAA.com. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A 
universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Thank you for staying with us. 23 more teams will learn their matchups and destinations as we show you the rest of the schools that will participate in the 2023 NCAA Division III Women's Lacrosse Championship. And we lead off this side of the bracket with a second team sporting a perfect record. 18-0, William Smith, ranked number one in the most recent region. Three rankings, seventh consecutive Liberty League title for the Herons after a 14-4 victory over Ithaca. Junior Allie McGinty, named tournament most outstanding player for the second straight year. They cannot wait to participate in the championships for the 23rd time in program history. William Smith has won 25 straight games at Boswell Field. 14 and 5, Rhodes is in. Listen to the program records for this team this season. Emily Brunner, single season points. Emma Bradley, career saves. Barry Pinkett, single season ground balls. And naturally, Bruner is number one in assists, number two in points. And Avery Burke is number 11 in goals. An impressive season for Rhodes. How about 14 and 2, a Merchant Marine? That is Rhodes' first round opponent fourth NCAA appearance automatic qualifier representing the Skyline Conference. 18 goals on 28 shots in the victory over Maritime on Saturday. We say hello now to St. John Fisher, 11th straight Empire 8 championship after the Cardinals defeated Nazareth 10 to 5. It's their 13th NCAA appearance. The Cardinals are a host and awaiting the winner of a game that includes Mount Union. An anxious couple of days for the Purple Raiders. They were hoping to see their name on the screen. Now, despite a loss in the OAC championship, Mount Union isn't at large. They dominated the conference's postseason awards, taking four of the five major honors, including Bethany Snyder, the OAC Coach of the Year. A good Monday to Aurora. 17-2 is their record. A school record for wins in a season. Aurora, the automatic qualifier out of the Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference. Two schools at the next site. The host institution is Tufts. The Jumbos can celebrate seeing their name in the field for the eighth time in program history. They're led by Maggie Carden, who has 58 goals this season. Tufts has advanced to the championship game in each of the last two NCAA tournaments. Absolutely a program on the rise, making the field for the eighth time in program history. Tufts will take on Cortland in the second round. The Red Dragons making their 25th NCAA appearance. Cortland advanced to at least the national semifinals six straight years from 2011 to 2016, winning the national title back in 2015. Cortland is an at-large qualifier for the NCAA tournament. Wesleyan Connecticut is in and a host this weekend. Ranked fourth nationally, the Cardinals in the NCAA championships for the fifth time in program history. Jesse Greenwald has 30 assists on the season. It's a three-peat for Roger Williams. Three straight Commonwealth Coast Conference tournament titles. Four goals for Riley Cavanaugh in a 12-9 victory over Endicott. This is the fourth NCAA women's lacrosse appearance for the school. 14 and five, Cabrini in for the 19th time in program history. 13 straight AEC tournament titles for the Cavaliers. It's their 13th conference championship in a row. Five goals for Olivia Little in a 15 to nine win over Marywood. Moving on, 18 and one is the record of Washington and Lee and they will host action this weekend. As mentioned earlier, they downed Roanoke in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference title game earlier the weekend. Ali Schwab became just the second player in program history to record 100 goals and 100 assists in the blue and white. 21st NCAA appearance for Washington and Lee. 
Congratulations to Washington Elite. Now, congratulations as well to Capital, the number one draw control team in the nation, seventh scoring offense in the nation. Grace Osborne leads all of Division Three in goals per game and points per game. She has nearly 300 career points. As a sophomore, her 215 career goals, already second in program history. You see some highlights of Capital. They are 10 and four and awaiting a first round matchup against Transylvania. A terrific season for Transy, 12 and four champions out of the HCLC after a 21-4 win against Franklin. Kentucky Derby weekend in Louisville always cause for celebration, even more so for Transy locking up that spot in the NCAA tournament. Gettysburg gets to host first and second round action this weekend. No surprise to see them in the tournament. An at-large selection in the field after a hard fought 15-14 loss to Franklin and Marshall on Sunday. This is Gettysburg's 21st NCAA appearance. Christopher Newport is in the field, another talented team needing an at-large spot after falling to Salisbury in the Coast to Coast Conference Championship. Christopher Newport sees its name in the field for the ninth time in program history. They'll face JWU Providence in a first round game. Fifth time for the Wildcats to participate in the NCAA tournament. Automatic qualifier out of the Great Northeast Athletic Conference. Emma Gleiman was named the tournament's most valuable player. Say hello this Monday to Salisbury, third straight Coast to Coast Athletic Conference Championship. Four goals in that conference title game for Aaron Scannell. Emma Scogland has a team leading 34 goals on the season. Yes, the 2021 national champions are in the field for the 23rd time in program history. It will not be easy should they play Washington and Jefferson in round two. 15 and three is their record champions of the President's Athletic Conference. 12 saves by goalkeeper Caitlin Brown were enough to help them hold off Allegheny 14 to 10 on Saturday that W and J senior class finished their career with a perfect 31 and 0 record against conference competition. Definitely a reason to use that hashtag Prez pride with pride. Meredith makes an appearance for the ninth time in program history, ninth consecutive UA USA South tournament title. So we have just three schools remaining in the bracket. Our final host institution is York PA back to back Mac Commonwealth titles for York, Pennsylvania, a hard fought win for the Spartans over Messiah 10 to seven. Shout out to Spartan senior goalkeeper Bella Garabo earning the Mac Commonwealth championship most valuable player after she made 12 saves in the final. A spectacular weekend for Stevens. The Ducks won their second straight Mac Freedom title fifth year Cameron Rogers totaled nine goals and an assist to earn MVP honors. Rogers ranks among the top 25 in division three in career points ranks among also the leaders in goals. The Ducks rank fourth in division three in fewest turnovers per game and assuming a neutral site matchup will be the first for the Ducks since 2020. Last but not least we say hello to Scranton. First landmark conference title in program history with a 17-10 victory over rival Catholic on Saturday. Third all-time NCAA tournament appearance and first since 2004. Junior Aaron Rich scored a career-high eight goals in that title game win, most by any Scranton player since 2018. And sophomore goalie Lauren Boldis ranks eighth nationally with a save percentage of 54.7. So there you have the 46 schools that will compete in the Division III Women's Lacrosse Championships, the goal for every school to advance to the national semifinals and final, which will take place May 26th through the 28th at Kerr Stadium in Salem, Virginia. The Old Dominion Athletic Conference and City of Salem will serve as hosts for the championships. We thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to follow all the action results and more on NCAA.com. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championships. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, 
you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.